Hello, hello, World Civ uh, 106 classes. Um, I just want to say uh, you're doing a good job. Uh, keep it up. I know it's very difficult to stay on track as we go and uh, get deeper and deeper into the semester. And um, I just want to remind all of you, please, on the papers, most of you are doing great, but you also need to put the work cited within the paper. I'm not so much concerned about seeing it at the end. Um, if you have footnotes and you do it that way, you're fine. Um, anyways, that's all I'm going to say about that. Um, so I was very busy last week. As I said, you've all been busy, but we transitioned from the Far East and we went back into the Middle East. And in a certain sense, um, you could say that Judaism is beyond the Middle East, right? This is when uh, you see a Jewish people practicing a religion outside of the context of directly in being involved with ancient Israel. In other words, in ancient Israel, they had kings and they had the temple where they did animal sacrifice. Nobody that you know that practices the Jewish religion does animal sacrifice at the temple anymore. And so um, that this is why I wanted to separate um, ancient Israel from Judaism and also see how the Talmud plays such an important role for a huge portion of Jews. Now remember the Karaite Jews, they actually rejected the Talmud. So not all Jews believed in following the Talmud, but um, the, the Karaites are a very small uh, portion of, of uh, uh, Jews. And I just want to kind of clarify something as well. In America, the majority of those who are uh, Jewish practice reform or conservative uh, uh, Judaism. And um, even though it's called conservative, it's very liberal. They have female rabbis. And uh, uh, my friend went to a synagogue where they had um, female lesbian rabbi. Very liberal. Um, and uh, so, th and on top of that, many are, are, are not heavily involved. Like the Orthodox Jews that you were watching in the videos where they're reading the Talmud all day long and praying all the time. Um, most of the uh, American Jews that you meet are not doing that. And um, if you live in uh, many parts of the United States, I mean, Jewish, the Jewish population is, is small in proportion to many other religions and people in the world. So it's possible that you're not even actually meeting very many uh, uh, people who actually practice the religion unless you're in, in, in certain areas. Like New York, for instance, has a very significant um, Jewish population. When I went to UC Santa Cruz, that was the first time that I met a lot of uh, fellow students who were not just uh, Jewish, but also practitioners uh, of the religion a lot more. Um, so um, I just wanted to add on to that. And, and then uh, just to say that we are transitioned into uh, doing Rome this week. I almost was going to cut out Rome and I debated about Greece just because those are always covered in Western Civ classes. Um, but what I want you to do is to think about how ancient Greece and Rome, uh, because they were such large empires, affected so many other things that, that we talk about. So, so as we know with Alexander the Great, he made it all the way into Afghanistan and up into India. He went into Persia. He conquered Egypt and uh, the Middle East, and the reason why that the Bible, the Christian Bible, the New Testament's written in Greek is because uh, the Greeks went all the way into the Middle East and the Mediterranean world and made that a dominant language. And remember that the first translation of the Bible, the Hebrew Aramaic scriptures, was made into Greek in Alexandria, named after Alexander the Great, in Egypt. Okay? And then, and then you look at Rome, and the, the quote that I think is always important is there was, uh, 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 as, as Rome dominates and takes over, they basically absorb much of Greek culture and turn it into to their own thing, but, but they create a Greco-Roman culture. And then one 
there was a Roman poet lamenting, captive Greece has made or, or holds Rome captive because uh, Rome is going to absorb so much of the Greek speaking world. And in fact, the Eastern Roman Empire is going to be exclusively using Greek. And, and, and so, you know, if you look even like at the, the Russian Orthodox Church, we're going to get into Christianity later on, sees itself as a part of the Roman legacy through the Greek tradition of Roman. And um, so it's huge. And we look at uh, the Jewish faith, and this is going to be the base, which we're going to learn later on of Christianity. And then we're going to learn later on that Islam the base of this religion is going to be the Jewish religion slash Christianity. And, um, and then these, all three faiths are going to be seen in Africa, Jews, Christians, and Muslims, and throughout many parts of the world. And Roman influence on Christianity in particular is going to be tremendous. So much so that there's going to be eventually Christian groups that want to, to, to expel as much of the Roman elements of Christianity that they can. And America is a culture, is, is, is a nation that is dominated by Protestants that are, uh, uh, most Christians, if they're not Catholic, um, are a branch that has tried to reject all of that Roman elements out of their Christianity. Um, and so, you know, we, we'll talk more about that when we get into Christianity. But this, 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 this week is going to be a way to get you into the foundation of moving forward into next week. And we're going to cover a lot on pre-Christian Europe, pagans, uh, um, the Celts and the, the uh, Germanic tribes in particular. And then look and see how that all gets incorporated into the broader uh, Christian world. Okay. So, uh, I hope you're all having a great, uh, week. And if you need anything, you have any questions, uh, please feel free to uh, hit me up and, and let me know.